it's here. The last piece we need for today's Tiki Technical Tuesday. We're gonna be building armatures. And if you're wondering what an armature is, come to the right place. Okie dokie. Here we have a whole bunch of master models. These are sculptures that I did for Tiki mugs of a whole variety of subjects. Now, they all look very different, but they all have two things in common. One, they are all sculpted out of the same material, which is a wax-based modeling clay called monster clay, and they all have an armature inside of them. Now, this modeling clay that I sculpt these things out of, it's, it's pretty firm. You know, you don't get fingerprints on it. It's got a lot of, you can handle it without hurting it, but it's not so firm that it won't distort unless it has an internal skeleton, much like you and me. And that is what an armature is. So inside of each one of these pieces, there is an armature, a rigid support structure holding the piece together. Just about every armature I make in the studio uses two materials, plywood, which you can get in a wide range of thicknesses. I love it because it's super lightweight and easy to cut. And I also use PVC pipe and PVC fittings. Also lightweight, easy to cut, and you can use a million different diameters together. It's handy. This guy, plywood, you can see it in the bottom. This one also plywood, plywood armature. This guy, he is a mixture of two. He's got PVC pipe, and then he also has a plywood shape, kind of like a, like a profile of a face in him. And then this one is a couple different diameters of PVC pipe joined together. Now, the new mug that we're gonna be doing is a very complicated shape, and it's gonna let us use some pretty fancy tools. Uh, but before we get into the fancy tools, uh, we've gotta design it. So let's head to the computer. Okay, so a couple of months ago, Mrs. Van Tiki came up with an idea for a new mug. Now, she usually comes up with the ideas for the mugs, full disclosure, she is the partner and the brains of the outfit. Um, and I let it stew in the brain to think of a neat way to make this idea into a physical object. Now, this thing is not necessarily tiki, but many people have it in their tiki bars or their lounges, and it is kind of a classic piece of, I guess, mid-century design, perhaps. Um, Anyways, it stewed, it stewed, it stewed, and then one morning an idea hit me. I grabbed a scrap torn off piece of envelope and doodled it on here, and um, I'm not gonna show it to you though because I wanna keep you guessing. Uh, but this shape, I realized it would be pretty complex and it would involve a pretty complicated armature, and I would probably have to sculpt this in multiple pieces and combine it in the clay. It was time basically to put the laser cutter to use and maybe even some other fancier tools. So first thing I did was design the armature on the computer. So I did a final design on my iPad and then exported that over to Illustrator. We printed out a bunch of paper models and I decided on what size would be perfect for this mug in the hand. From there, I took the silhouette of the design and shrunk it down a bit, thinking of what shape the armature should be. This is gonna be like a skeleton inside of the clay sculpture, so I have to make sure that it is small enough that it won't get in the way of the planned final look of the mug. Think of this as those wooden dinosaur skeleton models that you see in the like educational toy stores all the time. Remember those things? That's basically what we're building today. I'm gonna to use a combination of eighth inch part of a board that I'm gonna cut on the laser, a three quarter inch dowel, and then we're gonna to go to the next level and actually 3D print the top and bottom piece because they're, you know, kind of simple geometric forms that would be easier, I think, to print than to actually try to sculpt crisp and clean out of clay. Once I had all my armature puzzle pieces designed, it was time to nest them and color code them. The color coding tells the Glowforge laser what parts to cut first, what order I want them cut in, and then I nest them. It's like playing Tetris. I want to stack all of these parts in a way that uses up the least amount of material possible. This wood is not cheap and I wanna make sure that I, you know, get every little last drop of it that I can out of my cuts. So this brings us to the top and the base of the mug. Here's the base. And I know very little about 3D modeling. Uh, here I'm trying to export a 3D model out of Illustrator. It is a complete nightmare. Um, Big's studio over in Las Vegas was kind enough to offer to let me use, well, to print for me on his fancy dancy uh, 3D printer, the parts that I needed, only I needed to get him some crisp, clean models. So thank God right now during this virus crazy time, uh, Autodesk is letting people use Fusion 360 for free. 
and I was able to import my Illustrator paths and generate these super precise 3D models of the base of the mug and the top of the mug, and then export these models and get them over to uh, Mr. Biggs. Here's the final STL file. So I sent both of these over to him in Vegas. Okay, so now that we've got everything nested, it's time for us to go make some cuts. Turn on the laser. So yes, I'm using a fancy pants laser cutter to make this armature, but do not feel that you need a fancy pants laser cutter to make armatures. I've been making armatures for decades just using a jigsaw or whatever hand tools or power tools you need to cut up plywood and cut up PVC pipe. The reason I'm doing this is one, I have the laser cutter and it's a fantastic tool, and two, this is a really complicated shape and I'm really worried if I tried to eyeball this with a jigsaw that I would end up having wood in the way when it was time for me to actually do the real clay sculpting. Here's a peek at the actual speed of the laser. It's not as fast as a time lapse, but that's still pretty fast for a beam of light slicing through an eighth inch of plywood. I wish this was in smell -o vision so you could get the nice campfire aroma that comes from cutting this particle board much better than the aroma of cutting plastic. The campfire smell is always a nice treat. Once the parts are all cut, you have to peel off this protective film that's on the front and back of the wood, protecting it from the scorching marks of the laser. I have been chewing my fingernails furiously in this time of stress, so that adds a little level of difficulty to the process. Peeling the paper is actually kind of fun and zen and meditative, uh, but I gotta tell you, it was so hard for me to finish all of these parts and not be able to put them all together because I'm still waiting for the 3D parts to come from Vegas, from Big Studio. I couldn't resist doing a couple of test fits and ho oh, ho, look at that. I am so happy with the way these parts fit together. Okay, it's Friday, it's the end of the day. Uh, I was gonna call it for the day, but this box just arrived and I just have to peek. Um, so these are the 3D printed pieces from at Biggs Studio on Instagram. Check out his work. He was kind enough to print from my designs the two parts that I needed, and I can't wait to see. Super cool stickers. I always love a super cool sticker. Now I just want to say really quick, I uh, have only seen like sample printed parts from the form printer. That's the type of printer that he's using. And the detail is incredible. This is the first time I've ever gotten something um, 3D printed that I've designed. So I'm a little giddy right now. Okay, so it's got these little dimples all over it. These are uh, where the little support rods used to connect when this thing was 3D printed. So I'm gonna have to go and sand all those down, but ooh, feels good in the hand. It's gonna be a good mug base. Super, super stoked. Okay, well, I'm gonna set this aside and we'll jump on this uh, next week on Monday. Um, it is now time for me to go make some Mai Tais. Hey, it is 6.15 in the morning. I just poured slip, and I think we've got some time to start working on these armatures before I have to drain the molds. Okay, I've got all of the parts laid out. Now, I have made more parts than I think I'm gonna need. In my head, when I was making the armature, I kind of did a worst case scenario planning uh, making it a little more beefy than it might need to be. So I made a lot of these little support pieces, which you'll see how they come together. But right now we've got 41 minutes for me to work on this this morning. I'm gonna do two things. One, I wanna start sanding down all of the little dimples from the support structures. And two, I want to make part B of the armature, which is my guide template, uh, which is gonna be this little piece right here. Um, I'm guessing that some of you might have guessed what this mug is gonna be, but I'm hoping that 
I have a little spin on it that'll make it interesting. You'll see once I start sculpting. Anyway, we're gonna put this together and then we're gonna start standing this. You can see the molds behind me on the slip table. They've all been poured and they're filled with slip right now. The slip has got to sit inside of those molds. In this case, it's going to sit in there for an hour and 15 minutes before I can flip them over and drain them. That means every morning when I pour slip, I've got an hour and 15 minutes to kill before breakfast to do something. I will usually spend that time loading, unloading the kiln or doing some glaze work on mugs that we've already cast in the previous day. The resin 3D parts have these little dimples that are left by the support lattice, which is right here, you can see it, that holds up the part while it's being printed. I've got to get rid of all of those, and I've got to make these dowels fit a little better. They're pretty snug right now. So I'm going to use a rasp and go in there and file out the insides and file down everything else. Here we go. All right, it's about time for breakfast. I flipped the molds, they look good. Uh, and I've gotten these all sanded down to, I think I got that down to a 320 grit, which is it's pretty darn good. I'm gonna see if I've got something even finer. Uh, the dowels are actually fitting inside now. Hey, hey, look at that. And this is looking good, the, the glue is drying. And if you're wondering just what the template is for, doo, 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 here's a little hint. Here's a little hint. Anyway. It's time for breakfast. Uh, after breakfast, we've got to open up and seam all these molds behind me. This afternoon, I've got some glazing to do, puka pounders as always. And then when that's done, I'm hoping to hop back on this and start gluing together all the fun little bits. Um, yeah, can't wait. Anyway, see you in a little while. We got all the afternoon work done. Uh, the kiln is cooking away with uh, well, actually, that one kiln has the secret mugs in it. Uh, apologies for that clicking you hear. That's the relay on the kiln turning on and off as it gets hotter. But to the good stuff, uh, let's start putting this armature together. I'm going to do a dry fit first of the parts to see if they all fit together like I, I hope they do. Uh, and then we'll start gluing things. Okay, well, it's looking like it's gonna work the way I wanted it to. Um, you may be having a pretty good idea what the theme of this mug is, but I, I still think that there's gonna be a surprise when I do the, uh, the clay. Um, so this will be the actual surface of the mug down here and same with the top, but I'm gonna be covering this center part of the armature with clay. Now, I am going to be molding this in two different pieces. Um, this, I'm hoping, will come off like that. This will be molded separately and then this will be molded with a two-piece mold, well, three-piece, side, side, and the bottom cap. That's the plan, at least. Anyway, as you can see, I should actually start gluing this stuff together so it, you know, stays together. I'll be using a combination of super glue and also wood glue to put this together. And as you can see, I am not too worried about how clean and fancy it looks because this whole thing is gonna be covered with clay. Uh, I just want it to be strong so that it holds its shape.
Okie dokie. Ta-da! There it is, the finished armature for our new mug. Now, you probably have a pretty good idea what this is going to be, uh, but I still think it's going to be cool what I'm going to be doing with the clay center sculpture portion. Um, so anyway, that will be tackled on the next Tiki Technical Tuesday. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have this sculpture finished by next Tuesday, but at least I'll be into it and uh, you'll be able to follow along with the process. Um, and of course, this template uh, will help me figure out the silhouette uh, to make sure that I properly, you know, when I put the clay on the inside that I don't break out of the planned form, which I think you might recognize. Anyway, that's where we're at. Uh, oh, and then the top comes off nice and easy, boop, so I can mold this separately. I'm always trying to think ahead, so the plan is, like I said, this is going to be three-piece mold, boop, boop, bottom piece, slip's going to go on the top, and then I have this separate piece that I'm going to do cast. So I'll cast it separately. When both of them are in clay, we'll reassemble them to your finished magical mug. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked about it. Anyway, thanks for hanging out, and I will see you next week.